thank you for sharing your experiences with us because while I was there in spirit, I wasn't able to go. And I am um, curious about the pipeline. Excuse my ignorance, but is it above the land or is it buried below the land? Below. Below. Below, okay. yeah. And um, do you have any solutions for this? Because I, I know that lead was, um, there was some lead pipeline and I forget what state, but there was no flint, thank you. But there was no water there for a long time. So I'm wondering, do you um, a better a better pipeline that could have been we could have spent our money on, you know, uh, fixing Flint, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know much about the oil aspect of it, um, and I'm not really certain what your question is. Bright ideas for solutions. Oh, well, I mean, at the time, Standing Rock was in a lot of debates with how they could resolve this, and they, one of the things that I thought was amazing is that they were like, you know what, if you built a bridge, if you built a bridge across and ran that pipeline above ground, then we can watch it, and if it leaks, we can get to it quickly. Um, that was too expensive for them. They were like, no. It also would have created an economic driver for Standing Rock because it would have allowed the other side of the river access to the casinos. It would have been a win-win scenario, but it cost too much, and so they said no. Um, I, I broke up with America during that time. Like, I, my, any patriotism that I had is gone because because of the dollar, you know. Um, the I don't know. I mean, there's there's plenty of solutions and alternatives. They're just not cost effective at this point. And um, but there were there were ways there were ways that were even put on the table that were denied. Um, NPR just came out with what's happening with Standing Rock years later, and they have said that they're almost at max capacity of more pipelines being built, and they're full of like making as much talk as they ever have right now. And I'm just disappointed to read that. Who, who is? NPR came out with it. No, no, who's making all the money? Um, the oil industry. Uh, so there, there, there's like not, they've reached much max capacity of building more pipelines in North Dakota at this moment, and the profits are higher than ever. Yeah. The other thing that's, I think, important is that uh, Standing Rock had two major economic drivers. It had agriculture and the casino. Um, those were the two economic drivers for the community. The pipeline has the potential of destroying the agricultural uh, economic driver for the community. But all of us going there and standing in solidarity to prevent that pipeline from going, decimated their casino in the industry. Like the people of North Dakota are not going to Standing Rock after that. Like they are, you know, if we're talking beyond and after, Standing Rock's poor right now because of all of this. You know, there's a there's an ongoing uh, effect of this. Like we have a lot of pride and solidarity and, and you know get to do a lot of things, but the community that we're talking about is a piece of land and not a movement. You know what I'm saying? And that piece of land is suffering. So if you all get a chance, go gamble in very nice casino and lose, lose big. You know? um, I, I, there's, I mean, it's, 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 an, it's an honest uh, uh, complaint about all of this. And like the people from Standing Rock, you know, they're not stoked. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they're not happy. You know, they, they didn't come here. Like I'm here because I live here, you know? Um, but it affected them in a long-term way that we get to pack up camp and walk away. They don't get to, you know, they're on a reservation. So think about that too. One more question before we go. Okay. The elephant in the room is the current administration that we live under. Uh, so uh, we all need to get out and not just resist, but vote. Yeah. Yeah. And also know you vote with your daughter. Yeah. Like, remember, that's the vote that counts, yeah. really. Um, I'm, I'm all for voting, getting the right people in, in politics, but I'm also hyper aware of, of why these industries exist at all. And, and we can talk till we're blue in the face and blame any you know, political whatever, but I'm a native person. Like, there hasn't been an administration in this country that I'm like, yay, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> So with that being said, like no, our, it's our dollar that makes a big difference. You know, um, try to pay, try to buy things responsibly. You know, um, 
And that will actually make a big difference. You want to undermine the beast that has nothing to do with politics and more to do with economics. We didn't have to choose. <laughs> I, I want to say though that you know the camps, you don't judge food when you're getting fed. People are feeding you. You don't judge food. You're thankful and grateful for what you have in front of you. Yeah. into this room and into this museum is a huge, incredible um, gift of many, uh, many lights. And um, I would just invite everybody to vote with their dollar. Please, today, there's a hundred or more of you in this room. And Della didn't know I was going to do this, but we can help <laughs> this museum continue and help these artists and help that movement and vote with our dollar in here today by writing a check to the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture today as you leave. So please help be of uh, you know another thousand beautiful people with your dollars. So everybody the artists stepped out into the lobby if you want to say a little more to them please exit so we can get the next group in. Also also, we have t-shirts, Standing Rock t-shirts, and all the proceeds go back into the museum for the Here, Now, and Always exhibit. T-shirts, and go see the exhibit. Thank you for coming.